What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 14, Episode 7, You Reap What You Sow. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So we're starting with Miss Jenna, and she's casting for some new models for Love Scene, her eyelash brand. And I'm not sure if I said this in a previous recap or not, but I was so confused by her tagline. It's like, oh, um, my lashes may be fake, but I keep it real. And I was like, uh, I was like, where's, what's the connection? I was like so confused. I was like, it seemed kind of random for Jenna. But then it's like, oh, she has an eyelash brand. Like, duh, like that's the connection. You know what I mean? So I felt all dumb. I was like, oh yeah, love scene. So she's doing that. She just got into Target. She wants to like update the website. So she wants some new faces and uh, she might sigh literally just as diversity candy. She's like, it's important for people to see someone who looks like them. I'm an older white woman in this space. I want people to kind of feel seen. So I'm like, you could have just said like, oh, I invited Sai to get her input. She's an influencer. She's in this space. Like she knows what it takes to like stand out. You know, some shit like that. So on the one hand, I'm like, okay, well, Jenna's being upfront saying what it is. Like, no, I'm bringing Sai for fucking diversity candy. But on the other hand, it's like, well, you could have just bullshit, I don't know. So it was kind of a little funny thing. Um, while chatting with this one nervous girl named Mary, uh, Jenna's like, oh, you know, like, she just kind of calm her down. And she's like, did you have a childhood nickname or anything? And I'm like, girl, her name's Mary. It's fucking four letters. But uh, she shares that her brother used to call her Marnie and because he couldn't say her name Mary. And so it, like, just stuck. Like, her mom still calls her Marnie. It's, like, just her little nickname. And... Jenna's like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then she shares that um, her name is not actually Jenna. It's Judith. And when she was going to college, it was like her first day. And they're like, if you have a nickname, let me know now. And she's like, oh shit, now's my chance. And the only thing that came to mind though was what her brother used to say. It was like, Jenna, 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 Talia. And so she's like, oh, Jenna. But I'm like, if your name was Judith and you went by Judith, why would he be going Jenna, 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 Talia? I mean, it was just like this oh, about the word itself and not about, I don't know. It was kind of random though. Um, so yeah, she shares that. So I think it's really admirable that Jenna's like sharing this little fun fact about herself, being vulnerable, as she says. Like, it's not only being vulnerable, but okay. Um, so I think it's admirable that she's kind of opening up to a stranger about the stuff in order to comfort them. But she's like, well, shit, me and, you know, the rest of the ladies, we should be in the know. Why don't you tell us this stuff? So she shares that. Afterwards, Sai, she kind of comforts Jenna because, you know, she just had a breakup and whatnot. And Jenna then shares that Aaron is kind of upset with Sai because she left um, her anniversary party early and pulled an Irish goodbye, all that stuff. But Sai's like, I really don't give a shit. So we'll see what happens there later when they get a little segue scene and we see Bryn. She's working out with a trainer and she is moaning while doing kettlebell swings. And I'm not talking like grunting, like as she's touched, like full on moaning. And the dude's like, oh my gosh, are you having sex or what? And she keeps doing it. It's like, it's so much, it's like too much brain. It's like, I hope she takes like a good look at how she's coming off on. It's like, girl, it's too much. And granted, like, I'm not much of like a flirter. You know what I mean? Like I don't really flirt unless I'm like trying to like, hook up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like much of that, but like, I don't know. It's just not, it's, it's too much. It's kind of, it's uncomfortable to watch. You know what I mean? And granted, it's like, if I were like just seeing that, I'd be like, are they like having, like, I don't think it'd be good for the trainer's like business. You know what I mean? I'd be like, why is this girl he's training over here all moaning and shit being in a pro, like, I don't know. I don't think it's that good for business. Maybe I'm just being a prude about it, but I don't know. I think it's too much. I really genuinely think that Bryn's doing too much, and I was kind of open up a bit about why she feels the need to, like, put on, like, lay it on so goddamn thick all the fucking time. You know what I mean? It's like, girl, like I said last episode, it's like, you can make one sexual joke, like, an hour at this event. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe two if bo they're both funny, but it's like, girl, you got you got one an hour, damn it, and that's that's more than enough. But you know, whatever. Then we check in with Aaron and Abe. Um, it's so funny. So there's Cat chilling, and Aaron's like, oh, you know, the party was so fun. Everyone said it was so great. Everyone said the food was so amazing. Aaron and my girl want food. It's just like when Aaron was saying, oh, coming from a large, it's really family. What to cook? 
we cook a lot. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen. We never see her with food. And it's like, Aaron, what? what is this? <laughs> Who are you trying to fool? You know, I don't know, girl. Um, so we talk about that and then production. They kind of zoom in on Aaron putting ice cubes in a glass of red wine. And yeah, this is kind of random, but production made sure we saw Aaron putting these ice cubes in her glass of wine. It's like, ooh, girl. <laughs> So, and yeah, they just both go on and on about how fun everyone had. And it's like, like I said before, I think Abe may be like the funnest guy in the fucking law firm. Like the funnest guy among like a bunch of fucking wet towels. But it's like, girl, it wasn't that fucking fun. Like, calm down. Erin then shares that she's upset because according to her sister Kelly, all the ladies were kind of chit-chatting during their vows. Now, the way it was produced at least, it didn't look like they were talking during the vows. They were talking during like the bullshit speeches at the beginning. And Abe was like, oh, that was them? It's like, no, everyone was talking during that time. In fact, they weren't talking a whole lot during the vows. During the vows, I remember Bryn kind of like saying some commentary. She was kind of more saying it to herself and like for the cameras to be kind of funny. There wasn't a lot of talking going on. So I don't know. I think Kelly's on some bullshit. Aaron's right behind her, so girl, I don't even fucking know. She's also really upset about Sai leaving, of course. She says that everyone lacked party etiquette. And it's like, well, girl, like, it's party etiquette to offer food for your guests. It's party etiquette to make sure the house where you're hosting everyone is up to par on Real Housewives. You know what I mean? So there's that. Abe then tells Aaron about Bryn's commentary, how she was like, oh, you know, since you technically didn't exchange vows the first time, then you really aren't married, right? And like, oh, don't say my name um, when you're, you know, doing the vows. Um, let me know, like, after you, like, after your divorce. Shit like that. He, like, took fills her in. Um, he says that he laughed, but he thought it was kind of weird. And Aaron is pissed. And I'll bring this up later, but earlier in the season, we've seen Bryn kind of flirting with Abe a bit. We've seen Aaron acknowledge that Bryn's flirting with Abe. It doesn't seem like Aaron's upset about like the flirtatiousness, but it seems like it's more about like the disrespect about the um, the mention of divorce. I think at the anniversary party. So I don't know. Um, let me see Jessel and Pavitt. Quick little scene. They go out to dinner and they spend some time discussing their different opinions on whether they should have another child or not. Uh, Pavitt points out that Jessel still hasn't even told her family that she went through IVF. He's like, you know, you haven't even been honest about that with them. And Jessel acknowledges, you know, that's kind of the, the cultural aspect of it, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, Indian culture, it's taboo to like not be able to have children. And everyone's always asking, oh, when are you going to have babies? So it, it's like difficult for her. And um, she also adds it was such a traumatic process, IVF, you know, just the, all the hormones and just the process. So he says you have to go through like two rounds. It was just all crazy. And um, she agrees to tell her mother soon though. We then get Bryn and her ex Gideon. They check out a vintage car. And now, so at first, like when I first saw the scene, I was like, I thought he was cute. Cause we saw Gideon in like some pictures. He looked kind of cute, but I don't know. At first I was kind of like, mm. but the more I kind of looked at him, I kind of warmed up to him a bit. Bryn says he's like, oh, he's, a literal Prince Charming. And that's literally what he gives. It's, he's very regal, you know, a British dude. It, it, I don't know. A little too, like, upper crusty. Just, he, he, he very just gives off that vibe. But like Brynn says, she's all, she's fascinated by the um, Prince Charming aspect. She says they were together for a total of about five years. When they got engaged, they actually weren't together. She was dating someone else. And he just proposed to her. And she's like, the hardest thing you'll ever have to do is call your boyfriend and tell him that you're engaged to someone else. And I'm like, bitch, you love that shit. Bryn, you love that. The hardest thing you'll ever have to do is tell your boyfriend that you're engaged to someone else. Girl, shut the fuck up. Like, oh my God, that's so weird of Gideon as well. Like, what kind of sociopath goes in like, like, bitch, this is, this is not a romantic comedy. You don't, like, what? You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. That's very weird. Uh, very weird of Bryn. I, I don't know. And she's like, and I accepted it has this massive ring. And I was just walking down and I saw my reflection and I thought that I just couldn't be a wife. 
I'm like, Brynn, shut the fuck up, girl. You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm like, girl. But, like, she, she's not really getting on my nerves. It's just like, girl, like, shut up. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, she also mentions that, like, while Gideon was proposing to her, um, she's like, oh, this beautiful rendition of I'll Walk 500 Miles began to play. Now, I don't know what song she was talking about, but the only song I thought of was the fucking, and I will walk 500 miles. And I, like, that was the only thing that came to mind. I was like, a beautiful rendition of that. I am like positive that wasn't the song that played, but it's just so fucking funny in my head, like, to think about. Um, and I will walk. 500 miles. We then get Jessel and her mother. They go for some margaritas. And Jessel finally opens up our pregnancy journey. Um, she shares that, you know, we just weren't conceiving naturally. So we turned to IVF. It wasn't like my first option. But what are we going to do? She says she was like 36 at that point when she started. She did like two rounds that were unsuccessful. And then it finally worked out. Um... And yeah, she says she just kept her mother in the dark, though, because her mom, like, internalizes everything. Like, she was, like, should have been, like, on the first flight out. Should have, like, been, not been able to sleep or eat. Like, she's really, like, she, like, really takes it on. You know what I mean? So Jessel was, like, I don't want to stress you out. Like, you know what I mean? That won't really do me any good. And yeah, they both get emotional. Jessel's mom is, like, I would have been there for you. And Jessel's, like, I know you would have, but it's difficult. And they both acknowledge that, you know it would have turned into gossip, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, they can get pregnant, what's wrong? Is this something with Jessel, what's going on? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it would have turned into this big old fucking thing. So they acknowledge that, her mother seems very understanding about it, and they have a really sweet moment. Um, and yeah, they're just really glad that Jessel opened up. Um, then we get the last scene, we see the ladies arriving to Bryn's little wreath-making party, and I thought that was so fucking cute. I like. I look you love arts and crafts and shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's so fun. And, like, I don't know. Um, Bryn and Jessel, they roll up with, like, these fucking Dr. Seuss ass coats. Like, Bryn looks like the fucking Grinch and Jessel's, like, the Lorax. All, like, I'm like, what is this? Um, Jenna pulls up with hella items. Um, and, yeah, and Sai also arrives. She's shit-talking the food again. She's like, oh, like... There's no oatmeal? I don't eat fried food this early in the morning. She's talking about, like, oh, this this, avoc this avocado looks brown. Like, just talking shit. And Brynn actually looks kind of sad. Because, like, I think Brynn may have, like, ordered it out from, like, somewhere she actually likes and, like, wanted to support. And Sai coming in and talking shit on camera, Brynn's kind of like... Mm. Like, I don't know how to explain it. She's had this look on her face, you know what I mean? Um... But yeah, they're just talking shit about the food. Sai always has something to say about the fucking food. And to be honest, it's getting kind of fucking old. Like, okay, yeah, Aaron only doesn't really serve shit. Um, oh, there's not that. There's always something. And now it's like, oh, now there's this food that I can't eat, but I won't. I have standards. It's like, Sai, like, she's doing way too much to me. It's like, it, it's, it's getting played out. And yeah, so the four of them are just there kind of chilling. Jessel asks how Jenna's brother is doing. I guess he's, like, coming into town or whatever. And before Jenna answers, Sai's like, oh, is this the brother who used to call you genitalia? So fucking out of context, so random, so not even what Jenna said. And Jenna's like... Like, he, there's... <laughs> just cuts a look at Sai, just like, girl, are like, you serious? And then Sai tells the complete whole fucking unabridged story. Like, she doesn't paraphrase at all, doesn't cut to the chase or anything, says the entire tale. And it's like, what? And <laughs> Jessel's reaction to learning Jenna's real name was so fucking funny. Like, people online were like, it's like, like, Jessel's acting like Judith is a slur. She brought up the fact that her name is actually Judith. Judith? So yeah, as they're chatting, Jenna shares that her original middle name was Agar. I guess it's a biblical name. And Jessel's like, oh, Judith Agar. It's like the old Game of Thrones name. <laughs> and yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, Jenna tells the whole story about how her name was like Jenneth Agar Lyons. And she got married. She dropped Agar and made Lyons her middle name and took her husband's last name. 
Then she dropped her husband's last name, so now she has no middle name. So this is a little bit of a thing. Um, Aaron then rolls in, Roman she walks in, Bryn's like, here comes Darth Vader. <laughs> and it's like so accurate because everyone's kind of picking up that Aaron just has this energy. And that's what's been for the past couple events, sans her anniversary party, of course. But yeah, Jessel's event and this one, there's like, what's up with Aaron? And so yeah, and Aaron in a confessional, she's like, oh, you know, I'm pissed off. But I want to ruin her party. Just like she ruined mine! And it's like, girl, your party was ruined the second you and Abe's boring ass friend went up there and talked for 15 fucking minutes each. Like, girl, Brynn did not ruin your, like, it's so stupid, so overreactive. It's like, Aaron, girl, calm down. So yeah, then start wreath making. Uba's still under the weather, so she's not there. Uh, then Chit Chat about some holiday plans. Aaron says she's going to the Dominican Republic. And Sai's like, oh, who are you going with? Did you get like a villa or whatever? And yeah, Aaron's like, oh, we got this huge house. We're going with like some of our closest cousins. And then she slyly, she throws in like, oh, you would have gotten to meet them if you had stayed at my anniversary party. Just fucking easily just fucking slide that shit in. Uh, Aaron says she thinks that Sai is rude and has bad manners for pulling her Irish goodbye shit. So I was like, I was hungry. You know how I get when I'm hungry? I'm hungry. She says she doesn't give a fuck. Aaron said there was plenty of food and everyone like was lauding it, saying it was so good. And so I was like, there was nothing. Like there were like little piggies in a blanket. I'm a pescatarian. I'll, I'll do that. I think Aaron's like, oh, please. That's a little girl. Like, I mean, if she has these dietary restrictions, I mean, fuck. But, you know, Aaron also says that, you know, Hunger seems to be a big thing for a side. So like, maybe this bitch has a fucking tapeworm. I don't know. So, yeah. size needs to kind of scale that shit back below. She just traveled some fucking granola bars. I'll tell you, girl. Uh, afterwards, Aaron just kind of locks in on Bryn. She fucking gives um, Sai a little bit of licking and she goes to Bryn. And she says that, you know, she's just not here for her commenting on the divorce shit. Thinks it was just horrendous. And Bryn, she denies what Aaron's bringing up. She's like, I did not say the word divorce. Jess was back in her. It's like, oh, she did not use the D word. Production shows Bryn saying divorce, divorce, child separation. Said it multiple times. Um, so yeah, and then Bryn says that she was also doing a bit. She's like, maybe you should tell Abe to stop laughing at my jokes. And it's like, he was laughing. He admitted it, but it's still kind of inappropriate. Still kind of awkward. Like... What are you supposed to do? Just kind of, like, tell you to shut up? Like, just be all stone-faced? Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Brynn then says that Aaron's accusing her of flirting with a married man. And it's like, there's no accusations, Brynn. You are flirting with married men. Now, are you doing it with the intention to, like, fuck them? I don't, I don't think so. Maybe not. You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, I, like, you, you are flirting with them. You know, your intentions may not be, like, sexual or malicious, or want to call them that, but... You are flirting. You are being flirtatious. Um, Sai, Jessel, Bryn, and Jenna, literally everyone else that's there, they're all basically saying, no, this is just, um, this is Bryn's thing. Bryn no, flirts with everyone. Um, Aaron's kind of overreacting, blah, blah, blah. I mean, girl, like, this may be true. Bryn may be doing it. This may be Bryn's thing. Um, Aaron's may have not had a problem with it before, but now this is a problem. You know, and Bryn... You have to scale up the fuck back, girl. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, and yeah, and Bryn says that she was making jokes because the party was fucking boring. This pisses Aaron off. And as she's walking out, she's like, I'm just going to leave with my sick wreath. And then so, I think it was um, Jessel. She's like, oh, it's actually really beautiful. And Aaron's like, I know, because I'm great at designing and you guys all fucking suck. Bye. <laughs> and she just insults all of their wreaths. And to be fair, Aaron's wreath wasn't that cute. I think size was the best. Size had like just, because they had different kinds of like stuff. And I don't know. Size is the prettiest, I think, out of the, gl the glimpses we saw. But yeah, it was just kind of so fucking funny. Like, fuck you and your wreaths, bitches. Bye. And after she storms out, she calls her annoying ass sister. And her sister's like, oh my gosh, yeah, Bryn's such a bitch. And at the party, she's wearing sunglasses. Like, calm down. You're not a celebrity. I'm like, girl, Bryn's more of a celebrity than you'll ever be, Kelly. <laughs> And as Aaron's talking to her annoying ass sister, um, production zooms in on her shoes. These little black boots, these silver stars and whatnot. And again, just the production trying to shade, like, 
we don't zoom in on bitches' shoes like that unless it's, like, shady. You know what I mean? Like, if it goes with the outfit, you let it just kind of, you let it just all show. But that was, that was a statement for production. So, yeah, Aaron's sketching these fucking strays. Um, so it's kind of funny. Uh, back at the event, Jenna, she's kind of distributing the gifts that she brought. She brought these whole fucking, like, goodie bags. Jess will make sure she comes off as extra grateful considering the whole thing in the Hamptons. She also <laughs> mentions it'd be a great regifting bag. Like, it was all full of stuff that, like, um, various collabs that Jenna's doing with other people, just all kinds of shit. Um, Saish points out that Jenna always gives gifts that are, like, associated with her own businesses. Brent thinks that Jenna's hoping that they'll share on their social medias. And say, well, girl, Jenna doesn't need you bitches to share on social media. Jenna's bringing shit to the show. You know what I mean? And I don't know. Jenna also is, like, the one person who was, like, famous beforehand from this group. So, I mean, I'm sure she has more followers than Brynn. But that's neither here nor there. Oh, then end by them FaceTiming Uba, who gets to look at the food, and also says that it looks kind of gross. So, yeah, it sucks for whoever the fuck catered that event, but, um... Yeah, all in all, Erin was just kind of bringing some confrontation, but kind of being a little annoying. Uh, I get where she's coming from with Brynn, though. Brynn just needs to scale back her flirtiness, like, a couple fucking notches. You know what I mean? Like, to be very honest. I do think that seeing herself on camera may kind of help her with that. You may help her out in future seasons. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye.